Hi, my name is Mark Pauls and I'm teamed up with Sierra Garcia today to explain the fun and exciting data dictionary. For the first half of the presentation, I'm going to talk about what a data dictionary is, what it's used for, a data repository, data flows, and data structures. The second half of this presentation, Sierra will talk about data elements, data stores created in the data dictionary, analyzing input, developing data stores, using the data dictionary. What a data dictionary is. A data dictionary is a database about data. A data dictionary is a tool for recording, coordinating, and processing information about the data that an organization uses. Data dictionary is a central catalog for metadata. An automated dictionary is one of the most powerful tools available the analysts for documenting and information gathered from their activities. The dictionary can hold these analytical findings and can also be used to develop cross-references and correlations between data, information, business data, and process modeling items. What a data dictionary can be used to validate, provide, determine, develop, and create. Data dictionaries may be used to validate the data flow diagram for completeness and accuracy. Also provide a starting point for developing screens and reports. Determine the contents of data stored in files. Develop the logic for data flow diagram processes and create XML. Data repository. A data repository may contain information about the data maintained by the system, including data flows, data stores, record structures, elements, entities, and messages. Also procedural, logic, use cases, screen, and report design. Characteristics of data repositories are subject-oriented data present Organized from user perspective, large amounts of data, multiple sources of data, data covers historical and present operations, data added and never deleted. Data dictionary types, data flows, data structures, data elements, and data stores. Data flows. Data flows represent an input of data to a process or the output of data or information from a process. A data flow is also used to represent the creation, deletion, or updating or data in a file or a database. Data flow is not a process with the passing of data. Data structures. Data structures are usually described using algebraic notation. This method allows the analyst to produce a view of the elements that make up the data structure along with information about those elements. The graphic is an example of a data structure. Data structure types. There are two types of data structures, logical and physical. During the logical design phase, you define a model for a data warehouse consisting of entities, attributes, and relationships. The entities are linked together using relationships. Attributes are used to describe the entities. The unique identifier distinguishes between one instance of an entity and another. The picture came from oracle.com, which illustrates the graphical way of distinguishing between logical and physical designs. During the physical design process, you translate the expected schemas into actual database structures. At this time, you have to map entities to tables, relationships to foreign key constraints, attributes to columns, primary unique identifiers to primary key constraints, and unique identifiers to unique key constraints. That concludes the first half of the presentation. Now Sierra will tell you about data elements, data stores, creating the data dictionary, analyzing input, developing data stores, and using the data dictionary.
Hi, my name is Sierra Garcia, and as Mark said, I will be presenting data dictionary information on data elements, data stores, creating the data, data dictionary, analyzing input, developing data stores, and how to use the data dictionary. Once a data element is in the data dictionary, it is defined. This is done through the use of an element description form. This form contains multiple fields to describe each element, such as the element ID, the name of the element, any aliases it may have, a brief description. If it is base or derived, a base element is one keyed into the system, such as name, address, or city. A derived one is the result of a process. The form also has details of elements' lengths. Some have standard lengths, such as zip codes, telephone numbers, or state abbreviations. It also contains data types, input and output formats, validation criteria, any default values of the element, and any additional comments about it. A data dictionary is one of the key ways to manage data for departments. The process of creating entries for the data dictionary can start once a data flow diagram is finished or while it is being put together. The data dictionary will continue to be modified as the data flow diagram expands or changes. The main steps for creating the data dictionary are to analyze the input and output through the use of input and output analysis forms and to develop data stores. The first important step in creating the data dictionary is analyzing input and output. For this, there is another form used called an input and output analysis form. These forms contain information such as a descriptive name, user contact information, input or output data, data flow format, sequence elements of the data, and a list of elements which takes up the majority of the form space. The list of elements includes elements' names, lengths, whether they are base or derived, and their editing criteria. When this form is finished, an ana analyst must determine if an element repeats, if it's optional, or if it is mutually exclusive of another element. A data store is an item that will be created for every entity or each unique structural record. All main elements of a process must be stored in the system. The data for the data stores comes from the data flow. However, not all the data flow information is detailed enough. For this, we must study and break down to create an accurate data store description. Data stores can be thought of as permanent or semi-permanent. A data store is created through the use of a data store form. It holds descriptive information such as the data store ID, data store name, alias for the table, short description of the data store, file type, whether it's computer or manual, file format, whether it's a database or flat file, the average and maximum number of records, data or file names, if known, and the data structure. The data structure should correspond to names in the data dictionary. Data stores are used for data at rest, while data flow is used to illustrate data in motion. Data stores hold information such as item number, item cost, tax rate, and description, and they are thought of as more permanent information. There may be some derived values, such as a calculated tax charge, which would arise from the item cost multiplied by the tax rate, and these derived values do not have to be stored in the data store. When a data store is created for a single report, they are called user reviews because the layout is easily understood for a user. Like Mark explained earlier on, a data dictionary is basically data about data. It is used as a tool for recording, organizing, and managing information about the data that an organization uses. The data dictionary must not be thought of as an end. An, an analyst should view it right alongside analysis and design. Data items will be added along the way as analysts make changes. In order for the data dictionary to be really of use, it should be related to multiple system programs in order to stay up to date with changes and to keep the database equally consistent. With the use of the data dictionary, reports, screens, and forms can be produced. Computer language source code can also be derived from the data store data, such as XML, which stands for Extensible Markup Language, and it can be used to transfer data between systems or businesses within a business. The use of the data dictionary, if used properly, can bring out great returns on investment. If created in time, it can also shorten the design and analysis process, which in the end saves the business time and costs.